Hi everyone, it's me, Leslie, here with another video. Thank you so much for watching my video and thank you so much for subscribing. Today I'm doing a story time discussion to talk about the myth of the complete family or the myth of the perfect family. So as some of you may know, I'm married and we have a beautiful daughter named Rose. She'll be four in a couple weeks and in a couple months, we will be having uh, baby number two and it's another girl and Rose can't be more thrilled to have a playmate coming and she claims her new best friend. So I'm making this video because this pregnancy has been different than the first pregnancy. And also with the differences have come the realization that some of us have um, this idea of what constitutes a complete family with children or a perfect family. And what I found is that in our society, we put a very heavy emphasis on husband and wife and son and daughter. And a husband and wife plus a son and daughter constitutes the perfect family or a complete family. And so that's what I want to address today. And it's hard for me to really verbalize how I feel about the situation. But what I do want to do is try to express what I have found um, looking into this and soul searching uh, about the, the, this topic in general. What constitutes a perfect family? And what constitutes a complete family? Who are we to dictate what that is and what that looks like? Perhaps we could have that thing that our society dictates to be perfect. And then maybe one of the children is sick. Maybe one of the children has health issues. And what if, hypothetically, we get this perfect family and the children don't get along at all? One, one, the boy likes something totally different and then the girl likes something totally different and they're always just butting heads. And it could go either way with, say, if you have two girls or two boys, they could easily get along or they could easily just have completely uh, different likes and dislikes. Also, some of us can't naturally have, naturally conceive children. Some of us are lucky to just have one. And some of us never have children at all. Some because we don't want kids and some because we can't have kids. And I'm here to say it's such a shame for us to put such a demand on a family when it's essentially so out of our control. Why not just be happy with what we're given, what we're blessed with. Perhaps what's given to us is what's going to be best for us in the long run and for our personal growth. And what's best for our family as a whole. I think it's so, it's, it's so time, <laughs> it's high time for us to stop, for us individually and as a society to stop putting so many demands and so many expectations on ourselves and each other. 
and let what naturally is occurring occur. There's no way we can control really anything, but we can't control hardly anything that happens in our lives. All we can do is try to control the way we react to the thing that happens. Just as a body of water flows in a river, in a stream, passes over the rocks, there's no way to control that. We can't control where the water goes. Why do so many of us believe that we can control what happens in, in our lives? If a family is what you want, and if children is what you desire, may we just simply ask for a healthy child. And nothing more. Because we don't know what gifts that child may bring into our lives. We don't know what the future holds. But what we can do is take the opportunity to just make sure we hold place in our hearts for whoever decides to bless us, bless our lives. Whoever wants to come through us is welcome. And we need to stop trying to control that. Just let it flow like the river. So that's where I'll end this video today. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, bye.